Oh god, I'm just coughing all into the microphone. It's ridiculous. <coughs> there we go. There we go. Throat is cleared. It's time to talk shit for a bit. Charming. Charming indeed. Right. Um, I am recording at this point, by the way, as well. So just just so you know, everything is a go. We are we are now off into the stratosphere of shit talking to such huge extent. It's unbelievable. And I am oh, just say like as well. Days, oh yeah, pretty much. But I am going to say as well is that I have been drinking today. So be prepared for even more shit talking than normal. This is what the people are used to. To be fair, oh, these days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. But you know, the bastard cast is back ish. Probably for <laughs> that's it. I'll probably end up doing this one and then give up on the rest of it. So you know, be prepared, Jonesy, for the thrill of a lifetime as we talk about games and political affairs and various other shite that's going on in the world these days. Oh, don't worry. I'm strapped in. I'm ready for this one. Speaking of which, actually, did you vote yesterday? Indeed, I did. Did you? I'm not going to ask who you voted, but it took a lot of um, it took a lot of willpower for me to get up out of my bed and walk about 100 metres down the road to then put us across on a slip of paper of all the shit that I just knew nothing about, didn't know anyone. Because the thing is, because I, I don't know if you saw the post that I put up on Facebook. I did. About, yeah, did you see that? It's like I basically posted up saying that I had no interest in voting. So if you want my vote to count, state your case. And I got so much hate. Like so many people were just calling me a lazy fuck. And it was just like, well, look, I just I have no interest in politics. That's all. I mean, to be fair, it did sound quite malicious, but it was really just pure curiosity. And uh, and yeah, and then eventually I just went, oh, fuck it. And then I went down to the to the voting booth poll area, whatever the fuck you call it. And looked at the sheet of paper, and it was just filled with all these people. I had no idea who they were. And then I realised, oh, yeah, shit, they're the local representatives. And I had no idea who they were, and I think I put a cross on something. I was very tempted to draw a cock, to be fair, but I uh, I decided against it. And then I put my cross on the bit of paper and put it in the box, and I left. And and that was, that's was that been my most uh, contribution to political affairs ever, I think. Oh, did you like my um? Did you like my comment? The uh, the sagely advice that I gave you. Um, I can't even remember what your sagely advice was. I, I gave you the three the three main reasons to vote for the only candidate uh, you can truly trust, and that is our Dark Lord Cthulhu. <laughs> our Dark Lord Cthulhu. And uh, you know the three main reasons to vote for him: power, honesty, and of course, doom. <laughs> well, I thought um, you know, I wanted to put like Invader Zim or something like that. That would be pretty intense. Have you seen that Invader Zim is going to be coming back? Oh, uh, I'm very much looking forward to that. That's going to be so good. Because <laughs> um, I should actually just say to the people that are listening that um, my mate Jonesy here that I'm talking shit to, uh, we used to work together as games testers back in the day. And our days pretty much consisted of reciting bottom quotes to each other and talking about Invader Zim and various other bits and pieces. And, and well, making lists of all of the TV shows we can remember from being kids <laughs> without using the internet. I've still got oh, somewhere. Mate, that was possibly one of the best lists I've ever devised. Like, the fact that we were going purely off memory. And it was front and back yeah. as well. There, it like, wasn't like... There's like three sheets of the stuff. <laughs> I know. And that was the beauty of it. We'd spent ages just going through various cartoons and then it went on to things like Blue Peter and Finders Keepers and God knows whatever the fuck else. Oh, that was such a good day. Uh, that, was, that, was, that, that was the best way to make a really dull day really fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was. But to be fair, like I really want to see what we wrote on that list because I'm pretty certain there would be things along the lines of like the Crystal Maze and Saved by the Bell and Clarissa Explains All, I'm pretty sure was on that list as well. Well, one day, when I actually decide to go into that utter cesspit that I call my room, uh, I'll see if I can dig it out. Indeed, yeah, we'll have to. But I think um, I should probably just give uh, the people that are listening, if there is anyone listening, if you are listening, then, you know, I feel sorry for you, to be fair, because um, this is, you know, just a load of old shash. But, um, but no, the main concept of these bastard casts, like they were before is just to bring people on and talk bollocks about whatever we feel like talking about, basically. Mm. Um, and speaking of bollocks, uh, I've 
um, been seeing on GameSpot that E3 is going to be, you know... Well, actually, to be fair, they've, they've announced um, quite a lot of games. I don't know if you've seen what they're going to be announcing at E3. <laughs> to be honest, I don't really pay much attention to it. I find... Maybe it's because of working in the games industry for so long, but I, I don't know. I just find E3 to be a whole lot of trailers and not very much gameplay. And, well, you know, we'll have what we always have. We'll have a FIFA and we'll have a PES and we'll have a probably a Forza or something. And, you know, like God of War, we will be trotted out again and another mm-hmm. Assassin's Creed. And it'll just, I don't know. I get a bit bored with it. <laughs> Yeah, well, the thing is, is that you're you were almost nearly completely right because after having a little look at what they were going to be announcing, there's FIFA 18, there's Madden 18, there's NBA 18, like 2K 18, and then there's also NBA Live 18. Um, there is another sports. Oh no, the Crew 2 was another game that they're going to be announcing, what? of which I really didn't give a fuck about. Wait, 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 wait. wait. wait the Crew 2. How in the world did the crew demand a sequel? I mean, yeah. it, was, it was barely even a presence in oh, the games so, world. Oh man, it was so bad. I mean, I remember when I was doing my um my like how big is it sort of driving series, and I did the crew as like the first video. And as I was driving through it, I was just kind of like, okay, this game is quite nice, but other than that, it's it does just look like a load of old ass. So I'm quite pleased that I didn't delve into that. But to be honest, I've never really delved into racing games. There's not really been a thing that I um that I've done. Because I tell you what, actually, I um I uh, like because speaking of racing games, they're going to be announcing Dirt Four. Oh, actually, no, Dirt Four. I think is already out, as far as I'm aware. I think it came out on the sixth. But I went to um uh I went to Speed Machine Festival, which was like a Silverstone like car event thing, whatever the fuck. Um and they had like this demo of Dirt Four, like they had like the actual racing simulators. You know, when you sit in the bucket seat and you get, you know, given um you know, it's sort of like the full experience as it were. And uh and the and the dude that put me in the chair was like, Do you want it in automatic or manual? And I went, I'll have it in manual. And he put it in auto. Uh, sorry, I, I asked for it to be in automatic, and he put it in. Um, he put it in manual. So I just fucked it up so badly because <laughs> I because I can't drive. And so you know, I mean, for you now that because you drive, you probably do a better job of it than I could. But yeah, I realised that it was all in manual, and I just went, oh fuck this, and I immediately just got out of the chair and couldn't be asked with it, and I just left. I was like, fuck this game. You've ruined my experience. I'm done. Fuck this! So I don't, I don't even care anymore. Do you know? What? I don't, I don't even want to drive anymore. That's how much you've ruined it for me. <laughs> yeah, that is what you've done. You've absolutely ruined my entire experience of driving in general by putting it in manual instead of automatic. How dare you? I'm out, and that was it. But um, but yeah, there's been a few. I mean, they've even recently announced um, uh, some th- uh, games that are coming out in June, and I totally forgot that they're going to be uh, bringing out the the Crash Bandicoot, um, what is it? Is it, a, is it like, is it basically just an HD remake? I can't even remember. Um, if that. it's like, it's a remaster. Um, but I think that they've sort of, um, like fixed a few little problems. Um, what I heard was, um, that the, the original base code or something for the games, uh, has been just lost or like, or, it, it, or, or like it's, it's in a format that no one can read anymore because it's so ancient. Um, <laughs> it's so they basically they lost have to, it. like rebuild it from the ground up. But um, but no, no, that um, the insane trilogy that does look, it looks really good. It gives me hope that if they can remaster the Crash Bandicoot, <clears throat> I want them to remaster Spyro. Oh mate! Oh look! What? Oh, oh, what? Oh, but oh, are you having a game? Oh. Game? oh. Oh, I'm having a game orgasm, sorry. What was the, um, fuck, what was the name of that game? It was along the same, like, was it Gex? I think it was it G-E-X, like, when you play, or was it Croc? Well, was it Croc? Well, 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 there's two of them. There's Gex, where you're, like, a secret agent gecko collecting TV remotes or something. 
Um, <laughs> ah, yes, mate. And Croc, Legend of the Gobbos, is one of my favourite games. Yeah, that was a Croc. Yeah, yeah, it, Croc was... Even oh, if it does have man. one of the worst game cameras it's possible to have. <laughs> <laughs> but that was like um, PlayStation Original, wasn't it? Yeah, like, that was way PS1 back, back in the day. Oh, man, I remember back in the day when I remember... Oh, right, I'll tell you what. I remember back in the day when I was off school for about two weeks. Like, I had a savage, like, illness. Like, I don't know. I can't even remember what it was. But I remember um, my two weeks consisted pretty much of renting, from my local rental shop, uh, renting Crash Bandicoot 2, I think it was. And uh, in the living room, I put my PlayStation in the living room. And I like would move. I'd be on the sofa with my blanket and all this other shit, and I'd be playing Crash Bandicoot whilst listening to my dad's like not the nine o'clock news and Rowan Atkinson LPs like from way back when, and also Monty Python and stuff. Oh man, what I wouldn't give to go back to them days. Oh, that would have been so oh, simpler oh, times. Simpler times when we didn't have to worry about mortgages and and you know life in general, pretty much. Just didn't have to worry about. Oh god, it was, it was. It, no, it was. It was so simple. You know, you you came home from school and it was just you know pop the console on. No such thing as online gaming. It's not even, not not, not even not even a twinkle in the milkman's eye at that point. It's just <laughs> well, I tell you, you what, down and just played a game. I remember those days. Yeah, they were the best. I remember as well, like back in the day when I didn't used to have a memory card. So if I was at a point in a game, I used to. I remember getting up in the morning. Like about, I don't know, seven o'clock or something. Because when you're a kid, you just wake up naturally like at such early times. And I remember I was playing a Duke Nukem game. I think it was like the first Duke Nukem game that introduced like a third person view of Duke. I okay. think it was, it was something along those lines. But I remember I didn't have a memory card and I was just about to go into a level. So I paused it and I turned the TV off and I went to school. And all I was thinking about all day was going home and completing this level. So I, I then came home and it was still on. And I was like, oh, mate, I can't believe that it's not been turned off or anything. I was so like, I was just really anticipating that it was going to be turned off. I'm so pleased that it wasn't. But that was just back in the day when there was no memory cards. You know, it was like, you know, with Mega Drive games, they used to give you like a passcode if you got to the next level that you'd have to type in. That just shows, you know, the level of memory. And nowadays, we've got consoles with like 250, 500 terabyte. Ridiculous. I remember when having, I had, was it having like an 8 megabyte memory card for a PlayStation 1? And you were like, I can make so many saves. (laughs) I remember as well when you, uh, when you would go into the system settings and you would look at your, uh, memory card saves and it would have like a little sort of animated logo for each game and when you highlighted it it would sort of like do a twist or a turn or some bullshit like that oh yeah the, the 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 original playstation like launch screens like that sound oh that's oh man back in the day well i remember like with my um one of my old playstations oh sorry playstation 2 i remember um it was so haggard and i was trying to play metal gear solid 2 on it or well, i think it might have been splinter cell um, Pandora something. I think it was the second Flint the Cell. And it got to a point where the, the disc was so battered that I would have to like physically lift the PlayStation and turn it like upside down and on the side and all this to try and get it to read. And then eventually it read and I was like, oh my God, you've been there for about an hour and a half or something trying to get the console to read the disc. And then you think, well, I should just move on to another game. But as a child, you are determined by video games. That's how you do. I, I, I do find it rather remarkable, though, that like if I dust off one of my PlayStation 1 games, like that disc has got scratches all over it. But if I put it in a console, it will still work. Like It's one of those old school... I've got one that's... Do you remember when the disc was like completely black? Like It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't shiny on the back. It was just purely black. Like, oh, God. I swear to God, that, that, thi- that thing will launch long after I'm dead. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, I do remember that. Yeah, when discs were completely black on on the back, and now and then I think was it the PS2 when they introduced like a slight purple tinge or something like that. I can't really remember. I can't. It's on my head. I can't really remember. I can't remember. You see, that's how they were getting old, mate. That just shows how old we're getting. Like we're we're nearly. I mean, to be fair, I feel I too. Uh, I do keep forgetting that I'm older than you, and you are about fifty five. And I'm still like twelve. 
Yes. And I'm like nearly 30 and you're what, 26, 27? I am. Like I'm, I'm, I'm 27 going on 90. Yeah, that's it. You always had the mentality. Whenever we worked together, you had the t- you had the mentality of a labourer, like a sixty year old labourer, just complaining about everything. Oh, it was marvellous back then. Oh, I say back then. It was only six months ago. It was fuck all time. It was not really that long ago, but it does seem like a lifetime away. That's ridiculous. But I think um, what? Oh fuck! There was another thing I was going to say about gaming. Um, well, there are like uh coming up i think um just looking at what they're releasing on e3 there's going to be a new assassin's creed origins um yeah that's also... it's supposed to be each yeah it's something like that but i mean i i i gave up on assassin's creed after fuck what was it after brotherhood i think it was yeah i think it was brotherhood and I just gave up on it. It's like I just I I think what I did was I rinsed out Brotherhood and then I went on to Revelations and then realised oh well this is exactly the same and then I haven't played an Assassin's Creed since, pretty much. I am. Um, I played three. Didn't think much of it. Um, played four. Really enjoyed all the pirate bit. Really didn't like any bit where I actually had to be an assassin. That got very boring. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was playing Syndicate for a while. Um, I don't know. I, to be honest, I think it's just because it's Victorian London. I have a sort of, well, I'm English. <laughs> I have a soft spot for that kind of thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost like, you know, you're going back into the sort of Blackadder third days, as it were, you know, way back when. Yeah, you know, it's like, like pit, pit, pit. shows. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, is that, um, yeah, like, loads of people were telling me that Assassin's Creed Black Flag is like one of the better ones and it was a case of yeah it was just all about the pirate ships but i just never got around to playing it and i even downloaded it for free when it was given away on playstation no sorry on uh, xbox gold and i still haven't played it and i don't really have any intention of playing it either because i just i don't care about assassin's creed games anymore i just don't i really don't oh god just... on, on, on a on a slight tangent um <laughs> oh god oh god this is what it's here for mate <laughs> My God, ah! Uh, do not, do not mention downloading games and then not playing them. One, <laughs> one of the worst things I consider about the Xbox, um, well, it's called the Home, but it's just a dashboard. Yeah, uh, yeah. One of the worst things is that if you go into the My Games and Apps bit and it has Ready to Install, so it's every game that I've I've ever got the license for. <laughs> oh my God. It, well, how how many? What's your list at? How many does it say for you that you've got ready to install? Oh, can I have a guess? Hundred and eighty <laughs> something. Fucking hell, son! What? Oh, what? There are lots of sales. What I'm assuming it's sales because there's a lot of the, a lot of these games I look at and I just think, why the fuck have I bought this? <laughs> well, that's the thing is that I remember. Um, well, yeah, I mean, the little technique, when you see a, a game that comes up for free, like, even if you don't intend on playing it, it's always best to just flag it on your console so that you've got it, like, for whenever you desire to play it, if you want to come along and play it. But um, I just remember, uh, fuck, oh, yeah, like, in the 360 days, when we were achievement whores, when we were achievement whores, you know, we would absolutely me. rinse the shit out of games. Excuse me, I was an achievement connoisseur. Thank you very much. <laughs> nah, you you were the biggest achievement slut ever. I... Like your game, your gamer score was in the hundreds of thousands. Well, I tell you what, right? I'm I'm bringing up my Xbox. Do you want to know what my gamer score is at now? So, yeah, go so on, I can, go on. So I can brag about how little of a life I've actually lived. <laughs> yeah, yeah go on, go on, go on. Fucking games for so long. <laughs> <laughs> right, go on. Let's have it. Let's see. Right. I remember. I remember you used to always play the fucking like the the arcade games, like just all sorts. Like if I went through your history, I'd just be looking at games going because I remember in the three on the three sixty, it would compare your games and it would show you like what your achievements are in comparison to the other person. And uh, and yeah, just going down the list of games, you had so many games that I'd never seen. Or played, or even heard of, and I'm just like, what the fuck? To be honest, that was thanks to stuff like Blockbuster and uh, Love Film back in the day, because I used to just rent oh, stuff. Because it was easier yeah. to, it was easier to rent it, be like, play it for five minutes. This is actually not that great of a game, but I've got an achievement in it, so now I can't get rid of that off my list, and then oh. send it back. 
Right. Love film. Oh, love film. We're going to go on to love film in a second, but go on, tell me, the, uh, tell me your game is called. 182,195. Oh, 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 oh. I mean, I thought that I was like rinsing games out with like 89,000 or whatever, but you've got 100,000 more than me. Yeah. Gee, oh, Christ on toast. Every, that is. The thing is, right, is that every single point of that is a friend I never made, or a time I didn't go out, or a kiss <laughs> yeah. I never got. <laughs> yeah, or a dick who never sucked. You know, all of that shit. I think you're projecting your own, uh, your own wishes there, Chaney. Oh, just firing it back at me. Quick, quick, well, I imagine quick. you'd be quite used to that, if I'm honest. Oh, 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 oh a double banger, a double barrel. No, I'm not going to go any further because that's just more ammunition for you to fire back at me. Pretty much. So, so we will leave it there. But going back to Love Film, fucking hell, what a disaster Love Film was for, for them. Like, for us, as the, as the, you know, as the customer, it was really good because you could just ask for all this stuff and then just not send it back. So you just get, like, <laughs> essentially, you're just getting all of this shit for free. And I remember um, me and my ex-girlfriend back in the day, we used to rent all of this stuff and then copy it using a DVD recorder and then send it back and then we've got it. Like, you know, it was ridiculous. But, yeah, the games... Yeah, fuck, I forgot they did games as well. Uh, and so, yeah. One, one of the saddest moments was... I mean, when, when I heard that it, when I heard that Love Film got bought by Amazon, I was like, okay... Well, not quite sure how I feel about that. And then they said, oh, and we're getting rid of games. I'm like, what? No! <laughs> how, how am I supposed to get my new games? I'm not going to buy them. I'm not a peasant. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Because, you know, games for us back in the day. I mean, I remember um, uh, back in the day when I used to thrive um, at GameSpot. And I used to thrive on the two for £20 deals. You remember those? Like, you could get two for £20, or I think it was three for... Fuck, what was those deals? There was two for £20, or it might have been two for £10, or something like that. And then it was three for 30 or some bullshit like that. There were just there were these really odd mixes of games that you could buy. They're all shit. Like, they're all bollocks. Like, all of the games were not, like, up-to-date ones. Like, you could get Call of Duty 2 and... Call of Duty um, 3? Yeah, yeah, essentially, you can get those two. I tell you what, right? Call of Duty Two, fuck me. This this just shows how little the game actually had. So, like a little while ago, maybe about a month or so ago, when they announced uh, Call of Duty, um, you know, the new Call of Duty, like World, like World at War Two or World War Two, yeah. I think it was. Which, to be fair, actually looks quite good. I'm not gonna lie. But then, I never get my hopes up for games anymore. But we'll come back to that in a moment. But they, um, I was trying to stream uh, Call of Duty 2 uh, because I thought, well, fuck it, I'll just do it for nostalgia. They've just announced, you know, Call of Duty World War 2, whatever. Um, so I started streaming it and the stream was so incredibly loud. Like I just was getting loads of complaints from people going, oh, it's so loud, like you need to turn it down. And I couldn't do it physically from my computer, like through my streaming software or anything like that. And I went into the game and in the pause menu, it didn't have an option setting. So you couldn't do anything. Like, you couldn't change the controls. You couldn't change the audio. You couldn't change the video, the gamma. It just had no option setting of any kind whatsoever. So I was like, oh, this is good. And then it made me realize just how fucking simple that shit was. Because it was all just done through the TV. You couldn't just physically do it through the game. And I, I, well, it was just a complete disaster. It was, Jonesy. I'll be honest with you. It was a complete disaster. And I stopped streaming. And I haven't streamed since. <laughs> so, um, you, so, yeah. You poor dear. I'm at this moment playing the world's smallest violin. Oh, I thought you were about to say I'm about I'm playing like a game and not paying attention to the conversation that we're having. No, no, no. Oh. I, I, I'm, I'm paying attention to it. I mean, you know, I'm not going to remember any of it. I'm not filing it under important memory. It's just oh, fuck bollocks. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's just pure arse coming out of the mouth of two English people. But, um... I was about to come back to something. I've totally forgotten what I was going to come back to. I have no... I really can't remember. Um, it can't have been that important, then. Well, hey, you know, well, pretty much, no, it wasn't that important at all. I'll be completely honest with you, it really wasn't. Um, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to throw a question at you. So what games are you playing at the moment, then? Fuck it, let's have it. <coughs> well, um, at the moment, 
I've had a sort of a thing of late where um, much of what I mentioned earlier with looking at all the games I have I, available to download, um, I've sort of made a deal with myself. I've really got to go back and actually play some of this shit that I have just been accruing over the years. Mm-hmm. Um, so at the moment, I am playing Fallout 4 because it suddenly dawned on me that all the DLC has come out for it and I've got the season pass, so it's the most complete it's ever going to be. Mm, and Fair. It's Fallout 4. I really like Fallout 4. Yeah, I mean, t- uh, this is something I really... I, I remember I had it on... Well, I say I had it. I've still got it on the PS4. And I got about halfway through it. And I still haven't completed it. And I feel so ashamed of myself. But I just didn't really have the time to do so. Because I was either editing videos or I was doing... You know, I was working or something like that. And I just never really had the time to do it. And then I bought it on a deal uh, on the PC, and yeah, I was just like, okay, cool, I'm really going to focus on this and actually do it. And then I played it for about half an hour and just stopped and just haven't gone back to it. And I feel so ashamed of myself for not getting involved in it, because all of the previous fallouts I had the Game of the Year versions of. So not only have I rinsed out the story, I've also rinsed out all of the DLC, and I just have barely touched Fallout 4. I just really haven't... Yeah, I just I don't know what it was. I just couldn't be fucked, basically. One thing I will say about it is it follows the formula of Fallout New Vegas in the because it's obviously got the multiple factions, it's got the multiple endings and everything. And I'll be honest with you, that really put me off in Fallout New Vegas because mm. it basically meant that I had to well I had to play through the whole game like four times, which I like Fallout, but not that. Or I would have to uh, find the point just before you make the major decision of who you go with, and then basically just go from there. Yeah, but, essentially. I mean, I like. I just, I just like a game that just like here's the beginning, here's the middle, and here's the end. There are multiple endings. I'm totally fine with that. But it's like, I just, I can't be asked. I'm too old and I'm too fat and I'm too lazy and I can't be bothered <laughs> anymore. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not like back in the day. Because I remember back in the day when um, when Oblivion, well, when I first discovered Oblivion, and I fucking rinsed that game through and through for about three months. I mean, this was like when I was just starting uh, college, and obviously, when you're at college, you don't really do anything. And uh, and we were on like summer break, and so I had all of this time to just do nothing. And, oh, there were simpler times back then where you really didn't have anything to do. You were kind of too... I mean, you could get a job, but I didn't because I was living off student loans. So I was like, all right, cool. And then, um, and yeah, I just spent... I would just get up, I'd smoke weed, and I'd play Oblivion, and then I'd go to bed, and I'd rinse and repeat for weeks and weeks on end. And, oh, the soundtrack of that game is still imprinted in my brainium. Oh, that was oh simpler times, Jonesy. Yeah, but yeah, but, such simpler times. Yeah, but yeah, it, it, it's Bethesda. You know, Bethesda do very good. Not only do they do very good games, they also do um, do very good soundtracks. Um, fun fact: when I when I completed the main story of Oblivion, the actual main quest, yeah, when I got the achievement for completing that, it got me on exactly ten thousand gamer score. Oh, it was it, it, it was my first major milestone <laughs> on the long journey to God. I wasted uh, my life. <laughs> yeah, on the long journey to oh fuck, what's happened? Is essentially what went down there with your one hundred and eighty nine thousand gamer score points. Like what? Oh, I don't really, man. I don't really know what your listeners are going to think of me now. Yes, I'm. Well, I'm, 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 I just admit it. I'm a gamer score whore. Fuck it. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I used to be back in the day. I'm not gonna lie, <clears throat> but I can only assume that people are going to comment down below and be like, "Oh, that's nothing. I've got five hundred and fucking ah, you know, all sorts." They're probably gonna, you know, think that your gamer score is nothing, or either that, or they're just gonna go, "Fuck me, <laughs> nerd." And then that's, you know, that's essentially what's going to be it. But who knows? The comment section is a cruel, cruel place. But not on this channel because everyone... Well, they're all bastards, really. We're all bastards. And so it's absolutely fine. Whatever they say is probably going to be a large mixture of kindness and sheer stupidity. Well, more than likely. Well, 
I was going to say, I'm not too overly worried that much about the comments because to you know to write a comment, you'd actually have to suggest that someone's actually watching this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is true, and no one's going to be watching this. Not one. Maybe, maybe four max. I think maybe might watch this or listen to it because that's the thing as well is that I'm probably going to have like gameplay in the background so that these people have something to watch, and I have no idea. I should have announced that at the beginning, really. But I'm probably gonna have some kind of gameplay going on in the back. It might be a mixture of either it might be either XCOM 2 or it'd be Minecraft, which are the two only the two games that I'm playing at the moment because they're sort of things that I can kind of like I don't know put down. I guess you could put them down and bring them back up again because they're not really story driven. I mean XCOM 2 kind of is, but at the same time it's not. Well, actually no, that's a lie. It is story driven, but. It's just uh, because it's like a turn-based game. It is one of those things where you can just sort of do a mission and then, all right, I'll come back to this later. And to be honest, after this podcast, I might actually go and play some mates. Come to, I'm, I'm, I'm doing quite well in it at the moment. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's only because I modded the fuck out of it, and the Long War mod on XCOM Two is just so fucking hard. But it's you know it's quite rewarding once you get that fucking oh once you start killing people and you get the snipers on the oh my god, it's so good. But um, but yeah, there'll be some kind of video stuff going on in the background, more than likely. So we'll take it from there, really. But um, sure. oh shit, there was something else I was going to mention about gaming news. Um, I mean, eventually at some point, this podcast will be broken down into more structured factions. I'm sure. Well, not factions, but elements. You know what I mean? It'll be stru- it will be more structured. There will be more. There'll be thought put into it rather than turning a mic on and just talking for a half an hour or an hour or however long this lasts. And if people are listening at this point, then fucking well done to you is all I can say. Well bloody done. Hats off. A round of, a round of applause to the people that are here and that are currently. Yes, yes, yes. Well, that was very cynical, wasn't it? <laughs> well, they they all have my sympathies. So. <laughs> yeah, that's it. They have my sympathies as well. But um, I th- fuck, there was another game that they had, that they were going to announce, and I've completely forgotten what it was. And I would bring up my web browser and find out what it is, but my internet is playing up a bit. So I, you know, that's the that's you know the level of professionalism that we're dealing with at this point, people. So ha- so strap yourselves in. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Oh god. <laughs> Oh no, State of Decay 2, that was another one that they were going to announce, which apparently has now got multiplayer, which could be quite good, I guess, but um, I don't really know, to be honest. I think that game was quite good, but then at the same time, it kind of wore out a bit as as it went on. Did you ever play that game properly? I never. I did a bit, but then I kind of gave up on it, really. I did, I did a bit, but I must admit, I'm... I'm much more direct about like games like that. It's more if they're zombies, I just want to kill them. Mm. Like because this was more, it was more survival driven and having to manage resources and people's um, like wants and needs and stuff. And honestly, I there's there's a big part of my brain that just doesn't care about that at all. Yeah, I really, yeah, I just want to kill zombies. <laughs> right, I tell you what, I've got it up on my phone. Right, we're gonna go through the list of the games that they're gonna start. Uh, that they're going to announce apparently. So let's start from the beginning. Where are we? Is this, is, is um, this off the Wikipedia article by any chance? Well, no. This is off of GameSpot. Um, I don't know. I kind of trust GameSpot. It's all right. But then again, you know, you never know what you. I I picked one and stuck with it. So that's my that's my case. Um, so what we got? So the first thing we've got Assassin's Creed Origins. So we've already mentioned about Assassin's Creed and how much I don't give a fuck and how much you don't give a fuck so we'll move on to the next one um we have agents of mayhem which that is, oh yeah that's supposed to be like the spiritual successor to saints row yeah that's it yeah so it's supposed to be like a spin-off to saints row of which saints row is a game that i never really got involved in the only thing that i would get involved in if i was to play it would be fucking on my chair keeps squeaking um the only reason why i would get involved in it is to walk from one side of the map to the other and unless i'm able to put cheats in i can't be asked to put in the effort to get the the progress in order to be strong enough to walk from one side of the map to the other um so i don't know i might have to look into that but then it also requires actually having to buy the game 
So uh, that's another thing why I'm not delving into it. So um, so let's move on to the next one, shall we? Um, new Bioware IP is being... <laughs> so, that's why, so this is the opening sentence. After the underwhelming Mass Effect Andromeda, uh, Bioware looks to rebound with what sounds like an ambitious project set in an all-new universe. Fans can expect the game to have new concepts, new gameplay mechanics, and new stories set in a unique universe. Did you ever play? Did you play Mass Effect Andromeda? I did. I was uh, <laughs> I was one of the poor sods that actually like pre-ordered a stupid oh, edition. Yes. I shouldn't have. Well, I tell you what, that's nothing. That's nothing compared to what I went through with No Man's Sky. Fuck me. Oh, what Pointless. Just No Man's Blood. Oh, mate. It was just nah. I tell you what, right? This is why I've really stopped getting hype for games. Like, I really, really have stopped. Like, just altogether. I think the only thing that I'm looking forward to, but still not getting um, over ambitious about, is Red Dead Redemption 2. And yeah, that I know it's going to be good, but at the same time, I'm really not getting my hopes up because every time I get my hopes up about something, I'm always disappointed. So I just keep it, you know, I just keep it nice and level. And then I just, if I go and play it, then I'm like, oh, okay, this is actually quite good. And then if it, if it's, if it's going to be anything like the old Red Dead, the first one, then fucking yes, mate, it's going to be sick. Um, but yeah, Mass Effect Andromeda. I mean, after all the shit... Because that's the thing. With Mass Effect 3, I have still not seen the shit ending to that game. Because I know that there is that huge uproar about how the game ended so abruptly. Yeah. I've still yet to see it. I refuse to see it. I do not wish to see it because I just know it's a whole heap of arse. Well, well, so, uh, well I mean, like, did you, did, you, did, you, did you complete Mass Effect 3? I did, yeah. I did complete Mass Effect 3, but that was after they updated it to have the longer cutscene ending. So, right. you know. You know how, like, right at the very end, it's sort of like a slideshow of, like, different races and what happened after? Yep, yep. Well, the original ending is just not having them. It just, yeah, is that, it, yeah. Basically, it was just, you know, whatever happened, whatever you decided to do with the Reapers, and then that's it, game done. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. Yeah, apparently that was pretty much all it was. You would just end the Reapers and then boom, that's it. Game over. And it was, I'm just so pleased that I didn't see the shit ending. But, you know, at the same time, it was still a shit ending. It just wasn't as bad as the shitter ending. So, ugh. I mean, yeah, again, <clears throat> not getting my hopes up about anything. Well, the, thing, much. Well, the thing is, right, is that I've got Mass Effect Andromeda. And what I'm really what I'm doing is I'm just, I'm waiting for Bioware to patch some stuff in it. And then I'll go back and play it. It's only because I just feel like it, it released in a less than serviceable state in some ways. Mm -hmm. And they have made quite good strides in patching out a lot of the problems that it had. But I'm just going to wait a while and then get into it. I still play the multiplayer every now and then. I, I love the multiplayer. The multiplayer is jokes. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I can imagine. Sorry, what was the what was the game you were talking about again? I just went completely blank. I was blank. As a fact, Andromeda, that game you uh, just mentioned. <laughs> what the fuck? That just went. Yeah, we're talking about this game, and it just went in my head and straight out the like one in one end, straight out the other. I completely forgot what the game was that we were talking about. Fucking hell! That's you know professionalism, people. That's that's what we strive for here at Eight Bit Bastard. Uh, I don't know that that is, that is what we have come to expect from you, Cheney. Yeah. Hey, very awesome. low expectations. <laughs> exactly. Right. On to the next game. So we have Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Apparently, this is best known as the mind behind Castlevania: Sympathy of the Night. Uh, basically, it just looks like some bullshit. F fighter game. I don't really give a fuck. What have we got next? next. Uh, Call of Call of Duty World War Two. Next. Um, <laughs> how dare? Well, okay. Now I'm really, really hoping that Sledgehammer or whoever's putting this game together. I think it's Sledgehammer. Do not fuck this up. I really. This is their last chance. I reckon to actually redeem themselves because after doing. So let's think. There was Black Ops. So when things started going off the rails a bit, so they did Modern Warfare 2, 
And then they did Modern Warfare 3. Then they did Black Ops, or whichever way. Black Ops 2, then Ghosts. Then Black Ops 3, I think. I don't know. The, Something but like that. As, Yeah, and then as soon as they got to Infinite Warfare, that was... I still think to this day that it's the most disliked video on YouTube. There could be others, but apparently that is, as far as I remember, it had like 3 million dislikes. I think, or something like that. I think it's the most disliked game trailer ever on YouTube. Ah, uh, that might be it. Yeah, that might be it. And with good reason, because I have not played that game. I have no intention of playing that game. And I still think it's a load of old bollocks that they decided to do the modern warfare remaster but then you had to buy infinite warfare along with it if you wanted it they didn't do it as its own separate game and i was really annoyed by that because i would have loved to have bought remastered that would be sick but you had to buy this other shit game in order to get the better game well, well yeah but that yeah you know, that was that that was just activision's marketing team knowing full mm. well that people would buy their shittier cod Purely so they could get the cod they all remember being really good. Because nostalgia exactly. is just... Nostalgia is the gift that keeps on filling up their pockets. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it pretty much is. Right, what have we got next? We have Crackdown 3. Ooh. Now, I have I have mixed feelings about Crackdown 3 because it still does look like it's going to be quite... Not quite a good laugh. Um, yeah. My only problem is obviously that this is this is like the third time I have heard that we're talking about Crackdown Three because mm -hmm. it's just it's been in the ether for God knows how long. Indeed, yeah. And I mean, I, I find see... it very difficult. I find it very difficult to get excited about a game that they've been teasing for years. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I mean, bringing up No Man's Sky again. Sky, no man's sky again they pretty much like teased the shit out of that for fucking like what two years something like that saying oh my god this is gonna be incredible and it just turned out to be fucking awful but i remember watching um with my brother actually i remember watching the crackdown three like multiplayer sort of demo um you know not trailer but it was like a demonstration so there's the you know the guy was going through everything and it was like, as far as I remember, like all of the map was like on a live server. So it was, I think it was something along the lines of like when it, when buildings get destroyed, they kind of stay that way until the servers reset, as it were. But it was just all done through a oh, fuck. I mean, I haven't seen it for God knows how long. But basically, it looked like that the entire area was fully destructible and it looked awesome. But at the same time, I immediately looked at it and went, do you know what? That is not going to be anywhere near as good as they say it is. It's going to be so shit. I mean, essentially, it's like kind of with... Um, <clears throat> what did they call it? Was it Project Natal or something before they called it Connect? Yeah, uh, Project Natal. Natal, that was it. Yeah, and then the fucking... There was the bitch on the stage and there was the screen and there was that kid that comes up and she, like, hands him a sheet of paper and he goes, oh, I'll take that paper. Oh, what? You mean Milo? Yeah, my yeah, that was it, Milo. Oh, what a twat! So like they, that was really, that that was such a, a just a not what it was going to be, like demonstration of all time. It was so fucking stupid. But that's what I feel that Crackdown Three is going to end up being like. Yeah, but, to be honest, you know, the, the, well, you know, the whole thing with Milo, that's that's just classic E Three. You know, <laughs> you go up there and you're like, that's. Anyone who's ever actually played games knows that this is no, this is nothing like what it's really going to be like. When they first announced the Kinect, when you saw how it was moving, you're like, "That's bullshit. That is none of that's ever going to work like that." Because it won't. Of course, it yeah, won't. Exactly, it won't. And then inevitably, like most new games that come out, the servers are going to be down for a couple of days, and then they're going to build them back up, and then it's going to be shit in the. Anyway, next game, what have we got here? We have The Crew 2, as we mentioned before. Oh, yes. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> that just sums it up right there. Yay. All right, next one, what do we have? We have a game called Cuphead. Oh, shit. Cuphead this is, is like... that, that's that, like, um, oh, that side scrolling, like, bullet hell shooter, but in the design of sort of like old school Disney cartoons, like Steve yeah. and Willy. Yeah, yeah, like a really old... I actually kind of liked the look of that when I first saw that. But yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's like the retro jaunt that has one of the most eye-catching and nostalgia-inducing art styles in recent memory. 
But yeah, as you say, it's just all done in that old school Disney Steamboat Willie styled animation, which I reckon could end up being quite good. It could be like a, a modern day World of Illusion kind of thing, potentially. Um, but oh, World of Illusion, what a game that was. Back in the second game I ever played, as a matter of fact, that game was. That was a madness. God, um, so old. <laughs> well, Sonic the Hedgehog 1 was the first game I ever played. And then, um, and then yeah, World of Illusion was the second game that I ever played. Oh, man, that was, those were good times back then. Right, what do we have? Oh, Destiny 2, yay. Now, I... I really gave Destiny a go. I really gave I it did a as go, well. and I did. I did enjoy it for a time until the grind really set in, and then I just mm-hmm. really didn't care anymore. Yeah, and I mean, I, I, I was I was talking to a, I was actually talking to a guy behind the counter at game um, when I was in there last because he mentioned about you know did I want to pre-order Destiny two and I went no not really. Riveting like, conversation for a guy that works in game. But, I know, sorry, carry on. but it was like. Um, is like, oh, are you not excited about it? I'm like, no, no, I do, I do kind of like the look of it. I must admit. One thing that does annoy me though is the fact that, like, only, only the aesthetic, only what your character looks like can be imported into Destiny Two. All yeah. the loot that you spent beyond time accumulating basically doesn't matter anymore. It, it, it just, I mean, I understand for the purposes of the game and the story, obviously why they're doing that. I didn't get it. I just. I've, I don't know. I just get very bitter about the fact that I spent all that time trying to get stuff, and then to find out that none of it mattered. Well, none yeah, of it actually did matter in the long run. But you know, if I wanted yeah. to play Destiny two, oh man! I mean, I just remember, um, and like I, I have to admit, like I did, ri- as you say, I did rinse up Destiny a lot when it first came out, and it was like, oh man, this is awesome. But, and I did. I did like the concept of if you wanted to do these games, like if you wanted to complete these levels and you had to do it with a group of four to six people or whatever. But the problem is, is that I never had a group of four to six people to play it. I may have had like two, it might've just been me and a mate or me and like two other people like yourself and I don't know, Leroy or people that we used to work with. But you know, it, it was just, it was it was just so annoying like there's still so many parts of destiny that i haven't been able to do because there's just no one playing it or and you can't match make into them either so it wasn't as if you could just join random people you had to have your squad of these people if you wanted to do the missions and i was just like oh for fuck's sake so i never really finished that game properly i just was doing the multiple just doing the same levels over and over on harder and harder difficulties I've, I've, and I've, I've, always, oh. I've always thought that the greatest nail in destiny's coffin was the fact that raids didn't have matchmaking if raids had matchmaking, I would have played it so much more than I did. But oh yeah, yeah need, exactly. Like, it's like I, you know, it, it's you need to have a group of six people. Like, well, I barely know even three people that have this game. Yeah, that's it. Um, it was just such a ball leg. Like. like it really was a ball leg. Like. Again, like I can, I'm gonna play devil's advocate. I do, <laughs> I do know why they did it. You know, it, it's it's like raids and WoW and such. You know, it's it's designed for you know groups of experienced people to go in, and it's a challenge. And I do understand that. Yeah, but it's also a case of yeah, but if I don't have these friends, I cannot even remotely take the challenge. So, <laughs> what am I supposed yeah. to do? Am, am I just supposed to make? Just go to people, please, please get the game and get good at it so I can play this. <laughs> yeah. Beg friend, beg friend, da 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 da, beg friend, beg friend. But that's essentially it. Is that you know special the friend? They didn't football friend, <laughs> destiny friend. <laughs> exactly. But that's the thing is that you know you never because yeah, as you say, there was no matchmaking, so it just became. It's such a nightmare. And I tell you what, the other massive ball ache was that with that game was was you know when at one point you would get given a task of being able to unlock like this super ultra rare gold weapon or whatever the fuck it was, and you had to do various different tasks in order to do it. Like for example, you had to get a certain score or a certain amount of deaths in a matchmaking game, and then you had to go and complete this level and do this level. Now the idea of that was really cool. And I remember grinding to get like this shotgun or something like that. I can't remember what it was. And then once I got it, I realized that all my guns were much better than that one. So I spent all this time trying to get this really, what I thought was going to be a sick gun. And then it turned out to be a really shit. 
So I was just like, oh, for fuck's sake. And then that's when I just was like, right, okay, I'm done here. I just cannot be fucked with this anymore. This is just too much effort. Ugh, it was the worst. Right, next game. What have we got here? We have Fable Fortune, whatever the fuck that is. I, I, wait, is, that, is that like Fable? Is in like the Fable that I'm thinking of? Like the Peter Molyneux lion head? Is that what that is or is it different? Yeah. Um, so let's see. With the success of Hearthstone looming large and card games based on the Elder Scrolls and the Witcher franchises launching soon, it only makes sense that the Fable series would explore the genre as well. So yeah, like the Fable RPG series, the quirky RPG series, which doesn't exist anymore, I don't think. Oh, Lionhead went, um, they went bankrupt or something. Well, they yeah, shut that down. was it. Yeah, they basically shut down. So now it's basically a Hearthstone card game but in the fable star universe which doesn't interest me at all to be perfectly honest no really not really no in, indeed so what else have we got right far cry 5 is next on the list and i'll be honest i rinsed up i rinsed up uh, far cry 3 i like 100 percented it did and i thought it was amazing and and then I was just thinking to myself the other day, I was like, oh, I never really played Far Cry 4. Should I really get into it? Should I bother it? And then a couple of days later, I was like, oh, Far Cry 5's coming out. So I was like, oh, right, okay. And there was Far Cry Primal as well, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah, I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've played Far... I enjoyed Far Cry Primal for what it was. Um, you know, it, it, uh, it's the Far Cry formula. If you played, if basically, if you played Beyond 3, you've basically played that. It's just yeah. you don't have guns... And it's just cavemen that you shank with rocks. Yeah. A flint attached to a stick. Yeah, along those lines. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's yeah, Far Cry. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's true. Far Cry 4, I never touched. Uh, Far Cry Primal, never touched. And, uh, and yeah, and now there's Far Cry 5. And there's been quite a lot of people like going on about how this game's going to be amazing. And to be honest, I it just. I don't know. I, re I I haven't even seen the trailer, to be fair, so I'm being very judgmental about it. But at the same time, it's like, I don't really give a fuck, if I'm going to be honest. Yeah. Like, really don't give a shit about it. Um, oh, yes, and the classic FIFA 18. Oh, yes. There you go. Your favourite. Your favourite, Jonesy. FIFA 18. Lovely stuff. Excuse, excuse me just a moment while I blow my brains out. <laughs> Indeed, yes. And then we have Kingdom Hearts 3 is going to be announced as well. Oh, oh God. The the sheer amount I don't care about Kingdom <laughs> Hearts cannot be measured by man. In, indeed. Why would you not want to play a game that's Donald and Goofy and Mickey with a load of Japanese anime characters? See, that, well? that's, that's not so much the problem, is it? I don't mind... The, the concept of Kingdom Hearts is really good. When I played the first one, all the many years ago, it was a really enjoyable experience. Mm -hmm. The problem is, though, is that the story is... I mean, Jesus, some, some people... Some people think like the Lord of the Rings is confusing to wrap your head around. No, nothing, <laughs> nothing on Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, it's... I have a feeling that you said that with your face in your hand. I did, I did. <laughs> uh, gathers, but yeah, Kingdom Hearts just one of those games I never, never really gave a shit about. I'm, I'm like, I'm really starting to turn into my mate Dan, like my best mate Dan, who just hates everything. I'm really starting to turn into that. Like, just having such cynical views on all games. But, you know, that's what happens when all the games you bring out are shit. So, you know, it's understandable that you would have those kind of thoughts. Well, to be honest, yeah, that, that, that's, that's, per that's perfectly reasonable. If the majority of games that you encounter are sequels or remakes, and there's, no, you know, there's nothing new. There's, like a, there's not a mm -hmm. new idea. It's like, ugh. Well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you one thing that actually really let me down, and I was really quite upset by this, was, um, you know, they've recently just released uh, Morrowind, like, um... I think it was a couple of days ago. But the thing is, is that what I first assumed was they'd done, like, a full HD remake of Morrowind. Uh, oh, no, but like, they didn't, did they? Because it's DLC no. for Elder Scrolls Online. Oh, exactly. And that's why I was just like, oh, you fucking cunts. Like, you <laughs> fucking bastards. And I was getting... I got really upset by that because I didn't realise until it was actually released. And then I saw in the tiny writing on the, on the game, oh, yeah, Elder Scrolls Online Morrowind. And I went, oh... Oh, and I was uh, and I was really quite genuinely looking forward to doing an HD, to playing an HD remake of Morrowind because that was one of the yeah that was one of the 
Elder Scrolls games that I wish I could have played, but I never really wanted to because there wasn't any audio in terms of when people talk. There was no speech. You had to read it, and I couldn't be fucked mm. to do that. But then apparently that game is supposed to be really good. And then when I heard, oh, they're making more window. Oh, yeah, oh, it's going to be sick. And then it's like, oh, no, it's online. And, ah, like, oh, just a, such a pain in the arse. I was really let down by that. I was, I was quite upset, Jonesy. I'm not going to lie. I was quite, it was quite mauling. Um, Did it, please. What have we got next? Yeah, right. We've got Madden NFL 18. Yay. Next. Um, we have Marvel versus Capcom Infinite. Um, I don't know if that takes you pickle, but for me, it can fuck off, in my opinion. I'm not. I'm. Re- I'm really not a fighting game kind of guy. You know, no. I, I don't. I don't do complex combos or you know, learning all the moves. I mostly just which one's punch, which one's kick. Dark, oh, oh, yep. there we are. Done that. Bam the shit out of it, and you will always win. Yep. But um, yeah, all right. Fuck that. What have we got next? We have Metal Gear Survive. Oh god, the amount I don't care about that can't be measured. Oh, either. Jesus, I tell you what, right? When I um, so I uh, I played Metal Gear Solid Five um, so that I could get um, so I could get the what was it? Uh, the Phantom Pain, I think it was called. Yeah, yeah. So I played through it to try and get the progress to unlock all of the areas so that I could do a walk across the map for the How Big Is It series. And I tell you what, I was so bored. Like, at first, I was kind of like, oh, okay, this game seems all right. But I then just realized that all it is is you get you t- you take a helicopter down to the mission, you do the mission, you get picked up by the helicopter, you stay in that helicopter, you go down to the next mission, you come back up and blah, 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 blah. And there was no i mean as soon as hideo kojima left it was like right okay well this franchise is fucked because there's no that was the one thing that i loved about metal gear solid as well as all my boys like my boys were vouch for this is that when a new metal gear solid game came out that was a weekend like you would lock yourself away you would get food you get snacks you get drinks you get you know drugs whatever the fuck and you'd sit there and it was basically like a 24-hour movie so you'd play like a bit of gameplay for maybe five to ten minutes and then you watch a cutscene for about 20 minutes, half an hour. And it was so good. Mm. Uh, and in Metal Gear Solid Five: Phantom Pain, there was just, there was none of that. Like, nothing. And then it turned out as well that after all the effort that I put in, I still didn't unlock all the areas. And loads of people gave me hateful comments saying, you didn't unlock this area. I was like, oh, as if I give a fuck. But, <laughs> but you know, I just was done with that game. So... If a Metal Gear Solid uh, Survive is coming out, then who cares? Uh, oh, now this this next game is one that I am actually quite looking forward to, which is Middle Earth Shadow of War. Um, the the new... Because um, did you ever play uh, Shadow of Mordor? I did play Shadow of Mordor. Um, I enjoyed it. Um, the one problem I have, and I think I've mentioned this to you before, is that um, Obviously, one of its main draws is the nemesis system. So, you know, there's always an orc or whatever the fuck they are um, to, like, you know, there's always one in charge you can take down, like, a war boss or something. Oh, right, yeah, I remember what you said. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I I found it annoying because, like, you can't clear the board with them because they keep coming back. Yeah, yeah. And it's, I, I, like, yeah. I just, you know, I'm, I'm a completionist at heart and I just... It kept. It was very annoying because I put all this effort into clearing the board and they just come back, and I felt yeah, like I wasn't I, achieving anything. I agree with you on that. To be honest, that was one thing that was a bit of a letdown. But to be fair, in terms of like the combat and all that, it was one of those games that I just didn't seem to get bored of. I just carried on going through it, and I nearly a hundred percented it. But in order for me to hundred percent it, I had to collect all the plants and shit, and I got. I think I had to collect like four more and I just couldn't be arsed. And I was like, oh, fuck it, I've 100% it, that'll do. But um, now, apart from that, I actually did uh, really quite enjoy that game. And so this new one that's coming out, um, like I said before, I'm not going to get my hopes up too much, but it's one of the few games that I'm actually kind of looking forward to for when that does come out eventually. Uh, what do we have? Right, NBK 2K, A- NBA 2K18. Next. Yay. <laughs> NBA Live 18. Next. Yeah. <laughs> Need for Speed Payback. Oh, Next. Shoot me. <laughs> uh, Psychonauts Two oh. is going to be announced as well. Yeah, is, is that um, Ooh. is that actually Psychonauts Two or is it Psychonauts uh, the Rhombus of whatever it was? 
No, it's uh, it's just saying Psychonauts 2. So as the follow-up to the Double Fine Games cult hit from 2005, Raz and the Psychonauts are caught up in another adventure where they'll have to use their psychic powers to transverse the environment and invade the minds of others to undercover the secrets behind the Psychonauts organization. See, I, I absolutely loved Psychonauts. I thought it was such a refreshing and such an enjoyable game. Yeah, fair. I mean, Psychonauts is one of those games I've heard so much, like from from yourself um, and various other people. They have said that that game is really good, but I never played it. Like, and I do kind of think that I should. I owe it to myself to go back and play it. But you do. I don't know. I, I do. <laughs> yeah, you do. You just go back and play it. You can't just go back and play it, you dick. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's just one of those games where I just sort of thought, uh, you know, maybe I might go back and play it, but uh, I don't know. I've still got a finished day of the tentacle that I bought for 15 quid and only played for a bit and then realized, oh shit, this is where I got stuck as a kid and I can't remember how to get past this bit. So, um, yeah, there's, there's so many games, Jonesy, that I have, that I've started and not finished and then eventually gotten rid of. Right, so right. Many. Do you remember what I said earlier? Please don't talk about this because yeah. it will make me die. <laughs> exactly, yes. Uh, so what do we have next? We have Sea of Thieves. Um, now, sea of Thieves, I've heard interesting things about because it's supposed to be that sort of procedurally generated, you know, you can ba- you basically you make your own adventure kind of yeah, deal. Yeah, I've heard... Like pirates and what have you. Yeah, I've heard some fairly decent things about this. Like, I've heard um, uh, quite a few of my, like, YouTube mates have raved about this game, saying that we should, like, you know, we need to get on it and things like that. And I'm just kind of like, I've not really seen anything about it, so I can't really pass a judgment. I mean, I've not heard anything bad about it yet, but at the same time, you know, once it comes out, it could just be like, oh, this is shit, and ma ma ma, you know, whatever. Yeah. But I don't know. It could be all right. But um, at the same time, not getting my hopes up. What do we have here? We have Sonic Forces, which is the latest 3D Sonic game starring not only modern Sonic and classic Sonic, but a completely new hero that you can create and customize. See, I don't know. I am kind of interested in that, purely because it looks like Sonic Generations, which is the best Sonic game that's been released in recent memory. Because Indeed, yeah. basically it was Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and 2. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, there was all of those shitty fucking, like, Sonic Heroes and uh, God knows. I mean, I... It, I well, no, it, 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 it's, only because, it's only because Sega tried to reinvent the wheel with every new damn Sonic game. He's always going to have some <laughs> sort of gimmick. Like, why don't you just make him run fast? That's all he needs to do, for God's sake. Yeah, that's it. I mean, did you ever play Sonic 4 when they released that? Like, yes oh god that's probably on my fucking download list yes <laughs> it is actually it's it. on my download list <laughs> so it is there but you just haven't gotten around to it I remember playing a demo of it with my brother and I was playing it thinking eh, this is alright but it just I don't know I think realistically if you want to get into a game like that you've got to be a kid because we were kids when we first played like those types of games and then you kind of I don't know I mean, if we had Sonic 4 back when Sonic, you know, 1 first came out when we were kids, it would be like, oh my god, it's amazing. But, um, but yeah, I don't know. You just kind of lose a bit of perspective with games like that because you just know exactly what's going to happen. You just run all the way to the right and then that's it. It's the end of the level. Pretty much. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It could be all right. But what have we got? Oh, we have Sonic Mania is... Um, Sonic Mania returns to the gameplay and visual style of the original Sonic the Hedgehog games on the Sega Genesis. It's been developed primarily by programmers Christian Taxman Whitehead and Simon Stealth Thomley, who are both known by fans as major contributors to the Sonic ROM hack community. So that actually looks like, yeah, going by the screenshot on my phone, it just looks like the original Sonic, which could be all right, but at the same time... See, I put up, um, I put up a, a trailer, I posted on Facebook, um, that I found. It's basically, um, it, it is, it's that game, but it's like how they've done um, a chemical plant zone, which is my favourite level of, of any Sonic oh. game. And that game used to that level used to scare me as a kid. But go on, go on. Right, how they've done it, like the things they've added to it. Oh, it made, I did get a nostalgic gasm. <laughs> it's a nostalgic gasm, did you? Indeed. Did you get, did you get a raging clue over this game? Oh, have you got a clue? Such oh a my clue. god! Oh my god! You got such a raging clue. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I mean, it could be all right, but I again, I'll probably never play it and. Oh, now this is a game that's going to make you fucking go wild. It's South Park, the fractured butthole. 
See, I am looking forward to it, but you know what? It's been delayed so long now. Like, so much of the hype out of the hype balloon is just gone now for me. Oh, full blown. I'll get it eventually, and I'll play it, and it will be fun, and it will be enjoyable, but fundamentally, I, I, I don't care as much as I may have once done. Yeah, because, I mean, they've been pushing that game back now for, what, like, two years or something? Oh, or maybe more? Oh, God, it was, it was supposed to be, um... Oh, Jesus, when was it first announced? So well, like, I think it was announced, like, early 2015, was it? I mean, I'm more than likely wrong. Oh, it was, it was uh, late late 2016 is when it was supposed to be coming out. Oh, right, okay. And then, yeah, it's just all been pushed back and shit, and, ugh, you know... I mean, to be fair, I never played the first one. I did a bit, but I never completed it, and I was just like, oh, okay, fuck this. You know, that was essentially it. That's what the vast majority of my gaming um, experience happens now. I just play a game for a bit and then give up and then go, oh, why did I bother getting this game? Um, can, play, uh, give, can play Stick of Truth? Yes. Can play Stick of Truth? Yes. Do you have a weapon? Yes. Um, what do we have here? We have Star Wars Battlefront 2. Uh, I don't care about Star Wars. I've never cared about Star Wars ever. I, and I'm sure you're going to hate me for that. Not really. I. No. Well, everyone, everyone can watch and like whatever they want. I don't really don't care. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah. I, <laughs> they, can, they can enjoy their Star Wars. I will not. I got Battlefront 1. I enjoyed it for a little bit. It was very thin on stuff to actually do. This is supposed to be a much more improved version, but. Like with a lot of these games, I'm going to wait until a good few reviews come out before I go anywhere near them. I'm not, I don't do pre ordering anymore because I can't be fucked with it. Mm hmm. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, say, going by this, it said that the first one uh, managed to sell 14 million copies. So it did all right for itself, I suppose. But at the same time, the novelty of it pretty much wore out immediately because it was like, well, I could just go and play Battle. Battlefield 4 which is a bit more of a better experience in terms of you know it's just better <laughs> like because it's not set in the Star Wars universe but I do remember um, my mate Jamie bringing it over quite a few times and playing it and being like yeah this is alright but then you know I can't really see myself playing it any more than this so you know I pretty much just sort of gave up on it really uh, and the final game that we have is oh we mentioned it before State of Decay 2 and that's the um, that's the next uh well the last game on this e3 list so uh story data state decay was a surprise here and with its permanent element it was a tense white knuckle affair with a lot of great action the sequel has a larger map and co-op support among other things now the the co-op support on this i think would actually be quite good because i feel that that was a factor that i really wish it was indicated that brought in on the first one but i think it will be quite good with a co-op on there I reckon it would be quite good. I, not going to say it's amazing, but I think it might be worth a play, maybe. I, I feel like with the way that State of Decay is, I feel like it would um, it would prompt a sort of Minecraft, sort of collective building kind of idea. Which is not building buildings, but, you know, building and maintaining the community. And, you know, mm. you, can have, you can have one guy who does runs and another guy who's solely on defensive and, you know, what have you. I think yeah, that, exactly. I think that if, if you've got, you got a little crew together and... Um, you know, you were really trying to go for it. I think it could be a very, a very fun game if you got the patience. Yeah, if you've got I think. Friends. Um, yeah, that's it. If you've got friends that are willing to put the time into it, I think it could end up being a fairly decent game. Because as you say, you have got one dude that could go off and do runs, or you can have two of you go off and do runs for supplies, and then the other two stay back and take care of the fort and fortify it, all this kind of stuff. But I don't know. Yeah, it could be good. But I think. Um, I don't know, there was something about State of Decay that was a bit complex that made me a bit kind of, uh, I don't know if I want to carry on doing this, because like, you had to sort of set up your workstations, and yeah, I don't know, I, it, I did enjoy it, but then the further I got into it, I was just kind of like, eh. But then... Well, it's, like, it, 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 it's a game that requires you to pay attention, you know, you can't just, you can't just do what, you know, what we would probably do, which is to bowl in kill some stuff, collect some loot, and then dump it out on. That, done. Yeah. yeah, that's um, it. The whole sort of Borderlands mentality. It, pretty much. Indeed. Um, oh, 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 if they announced Borderlands 3. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Borderlands 3. Oh, man. Do you know what, right? 
this is something you're probably going to hate me for, but I actually got rid of my still cellophane wrapped up Borderlands Handsome collection because I never played it. I didn't unwrap it. So I I just got rid of it because one, I needed the money, but two, at the same time, because to be fair, I got rid of so many games recently because I just looked up on my shelf and went, I am not playing any of these and most of them are still wrapped up. Okay, so I was just like, do you know what? You're dead to me. Uh, <laughs> well, that's the thing. Is I know that you bum borderlands you, or you know you would shag borderlands if it was a if it was a human but um but yeah for me i was just like oh do you know what i just i don't know i just can't be asked so i just got rid of it <laughs> you know, it's as simple as that really uh, that's fair enough. yeah <laughs> yeah no. but um but yeah that's the end of the uh e3 uh announcements and do you know what i think we've been going at this for quite a while i think people have probably gotten bored and left uh already so uh Oops, i think surprised. we could probably we could probably wrap it up here, um, but yeah, it's been quite a it's been quite a gaming chat. I thought we were gonna involve other bits, but then I realised this is Jonesy I'm talking to here, so it's gonna be nothing but gaming. So, um, but no, it's been good. It's just been nice to be able to just sit here and talk shit for a bit. But then again, I do that all the time anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. But um, but yes, thank you very much. If you have stuck around for this long, thank you very much for watching. And listening, because as I said, there's going to be gameplay in the background. I'm probably going to go off and edit and, and record that gameplay now. But um, but yeah, thank you very much. If you liked it, be sure to hit that like button to let me know that you liked it. And if you've got any suggestions of things to talk about, put them in the comments. And uh, there'll probably be another podcast at some point in the future. So for me, it's bye. And then for Josie, say bye as well. Bye as well. <laughs> oh, very smooth. I thought you were going to do that. I knew you were going to do that. But yeah, take it easy, people. I will catch you later. Peace.